Hi, it's Ileana, and I'm emerging about waist deep from ordinary everyday life to present to you my latest 12 by 12 ab- album cover. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just my 12 by 12 layout, an ode to a band that I happen to be listening to really loads lately, and they're called Dutch Uncles. Not Dutch Uncle, which uh, I believe is an American based band, but this is a Manchester based band, and they have released an album called Oh Shudder. And they're touring with that now. And I'm going to go and see them tonight in London, Coco. Really exciting. And uh, my husband and I went to see their warm-up show on the 26th of February. This layout is a kind of a nod to that as well, because I'm going to be sticking some tickets with that date circled on it. And uh, But at the moment, what I'm doing is trying to make this circle in the middle <laughs> look a bit spherical, like the album cover itself. The album cover and the album artwork is by Dr. Me. And uh, I'm not really artistically trained whatsoever, but I'm trying to get the shadows and things going on to make that look like a sphere rather than just a flat circle. Because I've used a lot of my own own cardstock here, just a kind of taupe greyish piece to back the whole thing, plus the red circle and some kind of teal triangles I'll be laying to the edges. And very little pattern paper other than that Kaiser Craft piece with the numbers. And the reason I wanted the numbers is because of the kind of... the, the this is a band that play very much with their time signatures um, and as do their influences. <laughs> and and this is the kind of thing I want to also kind of give a nod to in my layout is the fact that they've drawn from, in their song Drips, from very much I can hear the influence of Igor Stravinsky in the Rite of Spring. And lyrically, the song Drips does draw from that somewhat as well. And so the O is... Um, actually my first attempt at a cameo cutout first of all from the silhouette as well as the the wording dutch uncles so i wanted something fairly simple but i also found by um i just kind of tapped into google stravinsky to see if i could get anything that would draw from that artistically and uh, another youtuber have used that as their front cover to a symphony in three movements i think that was from another stravinsky ballet um possibly Uh, which I'm not so familiar with. But um, anyway, so that's exactly where this comes from. So sorry it's all a bit rip-offish. I've not meant it to be that. Obviously, this is just personal use, (laughs) which I'm sharing with you now publicly. But uh, I gain no money from this. So anyway, and that photo as well, that's kind of, uh, you know, the publicity around the band. But pretty much if you tap in Dutch Uncles, that picture comes up. So uh, thanks for that, you you good old Google. And whoever originally took the picture, you're brilliant. Uh, That's about as much of a nod I can give to you. Sorry. So I've used that uh, for my layout. It's my kind of keepsake, my memory about the amount of influence this band. Honestly, folks, I have no musical background. I can barely talk to you about any musical instruments or the time signatures or anything but this band absolutely rocks the whole lot and I love the fact that they're not shy of their influences uh, going all the way back from 100 years ago and probably beyond as well as the the 80s quite um, more markedly I would say. So the XO I've painted there is a bit more of a nod to their Steve Reich influence because the song that this band did called XO, um, it's not me trying to be all gushy and blowing them kisses and hugging them all uh, I like to think I'm a bit less of a creepy band uh, follower than that <laughs> but uh, is to do with their song uh, which draws from that and so does the orbs little fluffy clouds incidentally if you have heard that one perhaps more familiar with that than the band EXO uh, version but it's it draws from the uh, the song or the riff maybe uh, which was electric counterpoint three for your information anyway so the splats i'm putting down here these are gold i love gold have i ever said that before and uh and this was to sort of emulate the idea of drips because it literally was drips you know (laughs) and um and i've outlined with the same gold brush not to waste any ink uh, around the the o as well as around some of the other elements the, the, specifically the triangles and I did try to get it to just go around the D and then I was going to do it for all the rest of the letters but it started smudging onto the front of the D so I thought ah I'm just going to go full on with the, the lettering D but I did want it to stay white as well the rest of the letters for Dutch uncles so I've just kind of put a smattering of gold there and I like the fact that it brings gold to the other side of the layout actually which 
I hope balances it somewhat. I'm not sure if it's a particularly well balanced um, layout, but do you know what? I'm quite pleased with the way it's come out. It's slightly more simple, certainly doesn't have an awful lot of flounce about it, except for maybe the feathers. I'll come on to the explanation for those in a minute. And I used glossy accents to stick these down with, but actually what I should have done is just cut out the same thing twice or three times to give it some dimension, because I thought the glossy accents would behave a little bit like um, silicon glue to give it some relief against the page, but it, it kind of smudged over the edges. And I was just gingerly trying to tap it down with the back of my brush so that it would still look dimensional. And it, yeah, it kind of does. It doesn't really create any kind of significant shadow, but it's fine. That was a the gold feather I tried to put down. It doesn't work on that photo paper whatsoever. So that's the um, Amy Tangerine rub-ons. That's from. But um, and then I tried to go. Oh, so I rubbed all that off, and I tried to go with a feather stamp that I got from the front cover of a magazine, Craft Stamper. That didn't work, and I've just switched up with a different picture altogether. <laughs> And then I've actually changed the layout slightly of, uh, well, the positioning of that cluster, the photo cluster is going to become slightly more central to the O. And so the feather didn't, wouldn't have worked in that position in the future anyway. So I've left that blank, that area. But I've used, a, I've incorporated a, a kind of a silhouette of a feather later on. And the idea behind that, in case you're wondering, well, the feather down the bottom right of the photo there, which I did take at their gig on the 26th of February. It's not come out particularly well, but it's, hey, it's at least it's a original copyright. <laughs> that was them playing um, in Kingston. But uh, so the feather thing is the the kind of idea that, you know, of course you can use it as a quill to write lyrics, maybe music itself, um, but also that in the uh, playwright, if you call it that, the, the, screen, t the TV adaptation of the riot that ensued at the actual ori original showing of the Rite of Spring back in Paris, 1913. Where was I? Sorry, I was explaining about the feather. Uh, the fact that there was a admirer, I think she later became the choreographer's wife, actually, as I understand it from my reading around the subject. So Nijinsky's admirer was, uh, she kind of had a lot of plumage, and I think she was getting in the way of some of the, the uh, onlookers, and uh, so there was a little nod to that, that aspect in the film, for me anyway. Just trying to draw in some artistic influences, just as the band has for their lyrics as I thought. Not that they mention any lyrics about feathers, but you know, there's other stuff that causes me to believe that they might also have watched the same thing. So I do go on, don't I? Sorry, waffling away there. I'm pulling on in some elements there from my quirky kits. Uh, the cork pieces there came from, I think that was the November, December. Um, and those arrows also the same. Just to try and give the circular motion, uh, that didn't really work there for me, but I've kind of placed those round the outside a bit to kind of hopefully lead the eye round and round a little bit all the elements of the page as well as the gold doily piece I think that also came from the November December quirky kit um, and the XO might have done as well and that came from a quirky kit way back in the summertime from the Market Street and I've used the the but well actually it was a badge with a really clumsily placed sticker on the back it says this day um, so I've pulled out all that and I've just layered it up with my own um, dimensional tape so it sits a little bit more less rickety and a bit more flatly and I'm going to be layering that on top of those gold chevrons as I thought that was about the only place it could go <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you quickly about the I've done my own kind of poetic if you like um, journaling which you know I don't know it's a bit obscure. I'd say lyrically the band writes quite obscurely as well and I love that about them. They've given a bit of a hint of what this song could be about in some of the various write-ups. I think I read about this one on the 405 and so the, the band, or in fact specifically Duncan Wallace, went through the meaning of some of the songs and this one says, I follow the sound of drips. It takes me aback in time. Signatures and knotty notes stave off the westerly woodwinds. From the wings I hear Nijinsky call the numbers, as Wallace dances on. What a paradox that something so revolutionary can be so rooted in history. So there you have it. My ode, my nod, two Dutch uncles, Drips. I hope you'll check out their tunes. They are a fantastic band. Bye for now.